Now I'm going to be brief so we can get to uh, my colleagues who have uh, more information to share. And uh, we need your help. Um, to be quite frank, uh, we need to encourage our, our Buckeye fans to uh, make sure that they uh, protect themselves and, and protect those around them. Um, our, our mantra, our theme is every game is a home game. So uh, we want to encourage everyone to uh, not host or be a part of large gatherings or large watch parties. Uh, we want to encourage people to uh, not create environments where they're, they become super spreaders of the virus. Uh, encourage them to continue to follow the protocols of mask wearing and washing hands and physical distancing and, and enjoy the Buckeyes uh, virtually on television as you would like to, but not in large gatherings. Uh, that's a major focus of ours. Uh, we want to thank our county commissioner, uh, Dr. Mashika Roberts, for all the guidance she's provided us relative to uh, hosting the game and, and making sure that uh, we are able to have the people that we're going to have in the SHU uh, do it in a safe way. And her, her and her staff have just been phenomenal. Um, this is basically a, a great opportunity for people to enjoy the Buckeyes and, and cheer them on. And uh, we just want to ask you to help us send that message. So I'm going to turn it over now back to Jerry so you can go through our team. And again, I thank all of you for, for all the work you guys do to, uh, along the way here. Thank you, Gene. Uh, next up, we'll go with uh, Deputy Police Chief Tracy Hahn. Tracy? Hello. Uh, so the message from the police department is please stay home. Don't come to campus to tailgate. <laughs> please. <laughs> we... Uh, we will have a law enforcement presence on campus and around the stadium. We will be checking the parking lots to make sure that people are not on campus partying. And uh, once again, mask wearing is very important on campus. It's one of our rules here, inside or outside, you should have a mask on. So if you are one of the lucky people that does get to come to the game, then uh, make sure you have your mask on, social distance, and we will be patrolling the lots and making sure everybody stays safe for the day. And um, inside the stadium, we'll have a crew in there to make sure everyone's behaving. So it, it should be a good day. Thank you, Tracy. Next up, we'll go with our Assistant uh, Athletic Director for Event Management, Erica Hoon. Erica? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we're really excited to finally be putting our planning in um, effect this weekend. Our staff has been working really hard since the beginning of the summer, actually. Um, on hosting a football game. So whether that's no fans or 100% capacity, um, we've thought through a lot of elements, but our main focus has been on the essential functions to operate a football game. And we really um, honed in on what does it take to put on a football game and what do we need to do that? Um, but as well as creating a clean and safe environment for those staff and those people that are putting on the game. Um, so whether that's in the press box or in the restrooms or in the seating areas of the stands, um, we've thought them all through. Um, each of our staff on game day, as you read in Jerry's release, um, will be conducting a health assessment and a temperature check upon entering the stadium for the day. Um, so it's going to be a different procedure if any of you are lucky folks that get to come to the game. That's where you pick up your credential. That's where you get temperature checked. That's where you get clearance to come into the stadium for the day. Um, and then we'll also be operating on a clean field. And so what that means is you've heard a lot of talk about a tier one and tier two testing. Um, we will have staff that's identified to be tested. And those are the staff that will be 100% on the field for the game. Any staff that have a non-essential or an as needed, just in case this might break uh, function for a football game, they'll be seated up in those double A sections. And then if they are needed to come down to the field, then we'll bring them down to the field. Um, but we're, like I said, we're excited to put this into action. We're sorry that we don't get to welcome more people, but we are grateful that we have the opportunity to get a game on the field for our teams and for our student athletes. Thank you, Erica. And then last, we have our uh, tricker, ticket director, assistant AD for uh, 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 ticketing, uh, Brett Scarborough. Brett? Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about fans. So uh, we do not have fans in attendance this year with the exception of tickets that we will be providing to players and coach families. 
Uh, we'll have roughly six, up to 650 tickets for home player and coach families. And then we're providing up to 400 tickets for the visiting team player and coach families. So all of these uh, seating will be in pods of two to four seats each, uh, physically distanced and separated by at least six feet, similar to what you've seen on a lot of televised uh, Saturday and Sunday games where fans are allowed to attend. Uh, for the home team guests, uh, we are uh, seating them in seven sections spanning the west side of ADEC. And then for the visiting team fans, those will be over on the east uh, side of the stadium. Um, also, general fans have an opportunity to at least have their likeness be represented in the stadium through our fan cutout program, which is going very successfully. Uh, installation on that started today. Uh, albeit in the pouring down rain, but they're getting it done. And uh, the information is in the press release for how fans can participate in that. Thank you, Brett. And I'm going to add along uh, with regard to those fan cutouts, I believe we said, Brett, uh, it's going to take approximately 37 hours, man hours to put all the cutouts in. Yeah, that's grown a little bit. Actually, we're, uh, we're over 4,300 4, sold, and it takes about one minute per cutout to install. So do the math on that. We're probably north of 45 to 50 man hours to get that rolled into Saturday. That's, that's outstanding. Well, I'll stop asking questions, and we're going to turn it over to uh, uh, the members of the media. I know uh, uh, Heather Dinich from ESPN is right there, and I'm going to open the floor up for uh, Heather to ask a question or two. Please uh, direct it to one of the individuals. And then, again, if anybody else wants to ask a question, please uh, uh, shoot me a text on the, uh, through the chat or, uh, or uh, do the, the little hand wave. Heather? I have a question for Gene, and if I may follow for one with Tracy after he answers. Um, Gene, this is so much work, obviously, listening to all the people talk about what you had to do to get to this point. But from your personal perspective, how important was it to give Ryan Day and these players a chance not just to play, but to compete for a national title, knowing the potential on this roster? Heather, that's a great question. Obviously, uh, I think everyone knows uh, how I feel about uh, our coaches and, and our players. Um, the whole uh, battle was to try and give them a chance uh, to play the game they love, coach the game they love. Uh, they've worked so hard to have a chance to play. Uh, but yes, of course, a uh, chance to defend their Big Ten championship and ultimately maybe represent our, our, our conference in the CFP. Um, there's no question that uh, we have talent and they have that capacity. Uh, so I, I was fighting hard and uh, it's such a, a relief uh, to be here, uh, uh, to know that we have a chance to play and I'm just hopeful that uh, we're able to perform and, and ultimately get in the postseason like we dreamed of. So no, it's, uh, it's personally and professionally uh, very rewarding. And Tracy, my, my question for you, thanks, Gene. My question for you is what, what does your crew do? What do the officers do if you do find somebody who's in the stadium? Is it, is it a warning? Hey, guys, get out of here. Or are the consequences a little tougher than that? Well, we'll start with a warning and, and escort them out. And then if there's any issues with them not wanting to leave, then you know there's the trespass violation since they're not allowed to be in the stadium. It'll be the same with uh, folks that are tailgating. We'll ask them to leave, and then we'll go from there on, on getting them to move out of the parking lots. Next up, Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune, and Mary Smith will be on deck. Teddy? Jerry, thanks for calling on me. Good to see you all. Gene, two questions for you in terms of COVID protocols. Um, can coaches or schools be fined if the coaches are not masked at all times? Is the first one. At, uh, at this point, uh, Teddy, we decided not to do uh, fines. Uh, we decided to leave it up to our individual uh, schools and their game op operations staff to manage their sign lines. And uh, I think we're going to be fine. Um, I think uh, we're going to be obviously sensitive to the moment. You know, there's going to be times when Ryan Day is in the middle of a call and his, and his mask is down and, you know, we have someone to remind him to put it back up. Uh, so it's kind of like that get back coach, right? You know, right. pulling somebody off the field. So 
Um, feel good about that. And uh, so we're, that's the way we left it at this point in time. I hope we don't get to a point where we have to find people. Yeah. And how did y'all leave it in terms of an inactive list? Is it required by the schools to inform the opponent or the, the public about who is not going to be able to play? Well, again, we left that to the individual institutions and we'll follow our same uh, process as we have historic, historically have. Uh, so, uh, Jerry, unless that's changed, that's the last I heard that we'll follow our same policy. I'm heading in that direction, yes. <laughs> which, which will be what, guys? When do you... We, when we, do typically, you think we typically release uh, on Thursdays. So uh, Jerry, Friday morning. Friday morning. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Yep, thank you. Uh, next up, Mary Smith with WSYX Channel 6. Mary? Hi there. My question is for Deputy uh, Chief Han. About how many officers do you expect to have around the stadium and in that area on deck on Saturday? We will have um, significantly less than a regular season, but we will have an ample amount of officers um, I'm not going to say exactly how many. We're still uh, reaching out to some of our partners to to get enough officers in to, to work the game. So we'll have enough inside and outside the stadium to you know, significantly deal with every problem if they arise. Thank you. And then one more question here. Uh, this would be for, I guess, anybody from Ohio State. These cutouts, where can we find pictures of those and maybe some video of those being installed? I don't know if those are available at our disposal at any point right now. Yeah, this is Jerry. I can, I can help you out with that. And we can also get you with the uh, gentleman from the tech company uh, who uh, is uh, in charge of, uh, of, of installing them and, and producing them. And I believe he's uh, an Ohio State University graduate uh, as, as well. And, Erica, if you, if you had any more on that uh, that you wanted to share there, no? Yeah, let's get them some B-roll, Jerry. Let's get them some shots. And that's only if they purchase a cutout. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Uh, next up, uh, Whitney Harding. Uh, Whitney? And you're on, your mute there is on. Go. Mm -hmm. I got it now. <laughs> I'm using two different monitors here. It's a little wonky. Um, hey, Gene, I had two questions for you. First, very generic. Every, you mentioned the relief. I'm sure you're feeling excitement every year. I'm sure week one, there's nerves. What are the nerves like this year when there's so much that's out of your control involving this season? Yeah, I'll tell you, that's a great question, Whitney. Uh, it's interesting because I, I feel real comfortable with our, our protocols that we have in place now and, and uh, cause our, our, our coaches and student athletes have been going through this for quite some time. So I, I feel good about that. You know, my trepidation now is more about the game. And, you know, normally we have some, uh, before you play a Big Ten game, you have a couple of non-conference games and you have some film on your, your Big Ten opponent. So we have no clue what Nebraska is going to do. So I've kind of moved into football mode now. I'm, I'm kind of wondering, you know, what, what Scott Frost has cooked up over there in, in uh, Lincoln. And, you know, we're going to see the Virginia Tech defense or, or what. I'm just kind of – I've moved to football mode now. I'm just kind of worried about that. That's a much more familiar mode for sure. Yeah. Um, my second question is one thing I thought was interesting with the release Jerry sent today was the Scarlet Saturday streaming service for fans so they can still have some of that experience because let's face it that is a lot of what goes on at the horseshoe could you please just talk about that a little bit what went into those ideas and what fans can expect yeah i'm uh er erica you want to hit that one sure um i think our video team and our social media team have been working really hard on this whole second screen experience at home. And so bringing a lot of those elements that you would catch on the video board during the game, they're bringing that um, at home so that fans can have that on the side as well. Um, I think there's gonna be some tidbits pregame, some things during halftime to make sure that fans have that experience as well. Um, so I know that there's a lot of, it's a whole secondary production. So they're still gonna be maintaining the production in the venue for the invited guests that we do have there, as well as doing the second screen experience for everyone at home too. And we'll be throwing some Zoom parties up on the scoreboard. So uh, those of you or others who are having Zoom parties at home, uh, be ready. 
yeah, and something uh, something else with this uh, the Scarlet Saturday, um, which will really um, uh, be enjoyable by by our fans, we believe, is the fact that uh, the marching band has actually we've actually captured videotaped the marching band doing a brand new uh, pregame show, um, and also the first of we think will what will be multiple halftime shows. Uh, we will be showing those on the on the Scarlet Saturday stream. Uh, as well. So even though at this point, you know, some of the many great traditions uh, that uh, revolve uh, and surround Ohio State um, athletics and Ohio State football, you know, you won't be there to see some of those, uh, but we're doing our darndest to try to get as many of them uh, still as available, even, uh, even if you have to uh, watch them or, or, or experience them, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit differently this year uh, than, than in the past. Um, any more, any more questions out there? Anybody want to uh, just uh, go ahead? Uh, Austin Ward from Letterman Row. Uh, hey, Gene. Uh, yeah, okay. Every Saturday, I think so far, when there have been games like around the country with, state, with fans in the stadium, keep hearing, will the Big Ten consider changing course? Is there any possibility they could revisit that decision? Are there any discussions like that, or is this going to this, – this will be how it works until December 19th? You know, I, I think we'll all every week we'll continue to evaluate what's happening in other states. Uh, New Jersey has some very stringent uh, requirements right now, and Pennsylvania as well. Maryland, um, the, the, the state up north just lifted theirs a little bit. Uh, so what we want is consistency. We felt that every school should be in the same boat. And uh, right now in Wisconsin, right now you can't have fans in Wisconsin. Period. So even the families of the the student athletes won't be at that game if, if they had a home game. I think they're away. I forgot where they are. But they, they can't have fans at this point in time. So we decided that we'll all be in this together, and uh, I think we'll just go week to week. And what were the conversations like about the, the piped-in crowd noise with the coaches and NADs? That was actually funny. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, I never thought I'd be talking about decibel levels you know, as an athletic director. And uh, so I have my app now, you know, my Decibel X app, so I can, you know, track whether it's 70% on the field or, or uh, at the 85 DB, DPS. So I, I never thought I'd be doing that. But anyway, uh, you know, it, it was, it was uh, everyone had to um, try and, and get comfortable uh, with an understanding of what we were going to allow, frankly, our marketing people to do. And, and uh, it, we tried to say, think of it just like a normal game. If you get up to 85 decibels and the, and the team is walking up to the ball, it's got to shut down. Um, and you, in some cases, in different places, so that's been the band or whatever. And so we just had to get comfortable. Uh, so we're... I think it's going to be fine. Uh, we did actually talk about uh, penalties uh, being enforced. If, if if a marketing person makes a bad call, Erica up in the in the press box, we get a penalty. I'm going to be marching down the hall. But you know, so it was an interesting conversation. Also, I actually went Saturday to Saturday's practice and went down on the field so I could understand what 70 DP, DPS is and what 85 is. I was. It was weird. <laughs> I, just, I felt that might be one of the more uh, contentious debates with the coaches. So <laughs> thanks, Gene. Yeah, thanks. Next up from the Columbus Dispatch, Bill Rabinowitz. Bill? Yeah, this is for Erica. Um, what concerns you the most, just to, from a game ops point of view? This is obviously unprecedented. You've never done this before. Uh, there's got to be something that you're thinking, I hope this doesn't go wrong. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that we think of or plan for. Um, I think right now is just getting everybody to understand just how different it really is going to be. And our staff alone understanding that they just can't just go to the locations that they're used to going to. Um, and so really setting those expectations of our staff to understand how different it is for them and painting that picture for them. So they understand like, hey, I gotta get this done pregame. Well, that means I need to get it done at a certain amount of time before the team arrives so that we can maintain that clean field and those clean spaces. So I think that's my, where I'm like focusing a lot of energy just to make sure our staff, I want them to be able to do what they need to do to be successful during the game. 
but also keeping our team safe and all the folks that are being tested safe as well. So that's kind of where our focus, our hyper focus is right now. Okay. And as far as the parents go, obviously they're the only ones allowed in. I'm sure they're grateful. Um, what's the process for getting them? To, they, have to, they, have, they have to buy those tickets. Um, how does that work? No, so the, um, Brett can touch on it further, but they all have a pass list. Um, and so they enter through a pass gate entry just as they normally have for every other game that they've attended. Um, I don't know if Brett wants to elaborate further on that. Yeah, they, they provide all their names in advance. Uh, it gets entered into a system. We do end up printing tickets and assigning seat locations uh, for all of them. And then they queue up uh, on Saturday morning, uh, show ID at the ticket office, get their ticket and then go in and sit down. And, you, and you've told them after the game, you can't hug your, your sons, right? Yeah, there is no post-game uh, meet, uh, meet and greet, so to speak, for, for players and parents. That's a Big Ten rule that was decided this year. Thank you. Next up, I anticipate a couple quickies from Tim May from the Tim May Podcast and Letterman Row. Tim? And you're on mute right now, Tim. Sorry, man, my decibel, uh, my decibel meter was on. For Gene, I'm sure Gene's is now. Uh, Gene, why can't the marching bands be part of the Saturday atmosphere at each of these schools? What the hell are you doing with your podcast? Aren't you listening, Tim? Yeah, I'm Still listening. driving around. How many times I got to answer that question? Well, no, I'm just asking. <laughs> no, I haven't no, been I'm on your – you haven't had me on your – you haven't had you on my podcast to answer that, but I'm just – I'm just, I'm just wondering why, why, why can't the bands with the uh, rapid testing that's going on right now, why can't they be part of it? Yeah, I, I'm just kidding. So the, uh, we decided uh, as a league that the parents of the players and coaching staff were the highest priority. So when you look at uh, Rutgers, for example, I think their limit is 500 people in the stands. Wow. And Penn State is uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe it's 1,000. I'm not sure. So you can't have – uh, when you look at each player gets four tickets each. So reality is, and then you, you add the parents and uh, the families of the coaches, you're a little bit over a thousand right there. Yeah. So uh, we just felt like we got to take care of them first. Uh, and frankly, uh, Rutgers and Penn State are going to have challenges. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have a, an interesting conversation, Brett, next week when we're talking about the, the tickets that we need for our our players and our families, when we talk to Penn State about what they're allowed to give us. Yeah. So um, we just felt like we needed to be consistent and not have a crowd competitive advantage. Dr. Roberts had worked with us during the summer. We felt like we could have gotten well north of 20,000 in the stands comfortably uh, with her, her leadership. Uh, but obviously we, we couldn't. We, and the band would have been a part of that, Tim. Uh, yeah. But we, we decided not to do that. To Austin's question earlier, if there's relief as we move forward, the band would be our highest priority. That, that, that would be our first 300 that we would go for, and then we cascade from there. Yeah, and, and one other thing, you know, uh, like you talked about being down on the field on Saturday while y'all were testing all this out and stuff. Uh, how weird is it? Gene, because that's kind of what the atmosphere is going to be like. Just, can you explain to people who aren't going to be there how weird it really is? It's weird. I mean, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's weird. And, and it's, uh, you know, uh, Bill and I were talking yesterday, and the word surreal is kind of a, a good word. It was, it's just weird. And, and I think, well, obviously, when we watch some games, and um, we, I think uh, it was the 49ers game yesterday, had no fans, and that just looks weird. Uh, but yeah. I would tell you, being down there with no fans in the stands, li you know, listening to the decibel levels, that's, that's, this is all new for all of us. It's just weird. And I think for the, you know, for, it's just going to be weird all the way around. And another quick, you touched on this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about the, you know, the, the budget cuts and stuff you guys have gone to that y'all might even entertain travel day of game. Have you moved forward on that? I mean, will Penn State be an in and out game i mean well what 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 have you determined yeah we moved away from that uh we felt we feel comfortable now with the uh, uh, protocols we have in place or uh, with our hotels that we're going to use uh, actually we're going to be in a new hotel in, in uh, happy valley uh and the hotel will be uh, all to ourselves they don't have other people there uh so we're going to be in a, in a good spot so we decided not to do that yeah a lot of rooms have come open suddenly right <laughs> all of a sudden 
<laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, Tim. Next up, uh, Ben Blavot. Ben? Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm with the Lamb Chan, and uh, my question is for um, Tracy Hahn. Uh, so, uh, Ohio State, uh, during Welcome Week afterwards, suspended 228 uh, students who had partied by linking their addresses to the houses where officers saw the parties. I wanted to ask if there would be a similar method of sus suspension for this weekend. Well, that would be up to student conduct on what happens with the students. Um, we, if we have any students that are violating any of the rules, we will report them to student conduct. So, and then student conduct is who makes that decision on whether there's a suspension or not. Thank you, that's all. Next up, Brendan Gulick with Buckeyes Now on Sports Illustrated. Brendan? Hey guys, thanks. Uh, this question is probably more for Gene, but um, can certainly be answered by um, any, of, any of you folks. Uh, I'm just curious how many of the decisions Ohio State was allowed to make individually as opposed to things that were mandated by the conference. I know there's been a lot of talk here about we're falling in line with what the conference wants to do and want to try to keep things fair across the board, but what, what ability did Ohio State have to make some of these game day decisions for themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I haven't thought of it that way. Uh, Erica, chime in here. I guess the, the number of media that we can have in the press box, uh, I guess the number of photographers that we can have in ADEC and the videographers, I'm just, I'm just going through the list here, Brendan. That's a great question. Uh, uh, our signs are going to be 15 to 15. We don't have much spec. We don't have much room down there. We don't have much say there. Um, uh, Erica, what am I missing? There's probably something. Um, not a whole lot. I think because a lot of the recommendations we put together as different subcommittees to the conference. And so those were agreed upon um, from that level. And so those are recommendations based on the institution. Um, but yeah, I think with you, just basically our field protocol and how we are operating the field level and what we're doing in the press box and how we're operating, like I was mentioning earlier, is just the game operation functions. Um, those are our decisions because some of them are restrictions and policies put in place for the state of Ohio and for Franklin County. Um, but yeah, I think just who we are bringing into the stadium is really on us to navigate and manage. But then beyond that, I think a lot of them are to the conference. Well, my, my, well, Brendan, uh, the, the, the placement of the stage for, for the television, mm -hmm. so that for Fox. And then actually, Brett, with the tickets, uh, that was not the ability for a student athlete to transfer a ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as well as quantity, too. We, we kind of started uh went from 500 to 300 landed on 400 and then also the ability to transfer trying to keep it equitable uh across all the institutions and that is the ability for one player that's not using all four of their tickets to transfer some or all of those seats to a different player that needed more that's what we're talking about by transfers okay makes sense i just i had one more for gene specifically Obviously, there's been a, a ton to oversee here and to try to pull this whole thing together. I know you guys have had several weeks, and I can't imagine the number of conversations you've had, but ha has there been any one or maybe two things in particular that stand out to you as, you know, the biggest challenges you guys have had to overcome in, in trying to organize this whole thing so that when Saturday gets here, hopefully it's, it's smooth sailing? Um, you know, really, uh, once we got, once we were able to, to get, the presidents to allow us to play. Uh, there was nothing after that that was challenging at all. I mean, I you know, I I gotta tell you, it was the the, the hardest part, the biggest emotions, and my team can attest. You know, I was a complete idiot. Um, but it was it was hard. It was painful. And once we got the vote and we knew we could go, um, I'd probably say after that the schedule. Getting the schedule uh, was hard, but after that, operationally, I, I you know, I, it's probably hard for my teammates here. I'm, I don't want to sound that way, but for me, nah, nothing was nothing was hard after that. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Brendan. I will uh, add uh, uh, something there. Getting um, a press box of 225 
uh, working press seats down to about 28. That is hard uh, uh, on me uh, going through that right now. Uh, next up uh, from 11 Warriors, Dan Hope. Dan? Hey, Gene, just wondering, what's the communication been like with Ryan Day in terms of how their pregame might be different in terms of, you know, not doing the team walk, busing to the stadium and all that? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Dan. So he and I, uh, a while ago, we, we started having those conversations. And then obviously with the Blackwell being a dorm now, uh, that that changes everything. And, and of course, not having fans at in St. John or the Skull Session, that, that just changes everything. And so uh, when we started having a conversation about staying overnight um, in a hotel and not doing operational things in that hotel, it became clear that going back to the WAC was the easiest thing to do. Staying at the WAC longer on Friday and then going back to the WAC. Um, it was just, just the easiest thing. Everything's there. Um, you know, every, everything's there. I mean, you can you can tape there. You can do all your meet, prep meetings there. And then just bu go bus over to the stadium and put your helmets and pads on and go. So it, it was actually a pretty easy conversation. Um, he, he was there already mentally, and uh, so it was, wasn't that hard of a conversation. Op operationally, it's actually pretty, pretty good when you think about everything that we have in the WAC. So it, it, was, it wasn't that bad. It was pretty easy. Does that make it easier when you don't have to worry about the players being in more different places before the game? Well said, Dan. And, uh, you know, it's funny. It'll be interesting next year when we're hopefully back to normal. <laughs> It'll be interesting how we approach this, uh, really, because I, I personally think practically it's going to be a, a better situation. And, and you have more control. And, and uh, now that, you know, there are certain things we'll have to do uh, because of the, the traditions. But, you know, you might just stay overnight and go back to the WAC and then go straight to the skull session, drop them off and go. So it, Yes, it, I, it's going to be much better for our kids because you just don't have as much interaction. Thanks, Gene. Next up, Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey? Gene, just to clarify on Dan's last point uh, or question, you guys will not – play team will not stay at any sort of team hotel this year It's at, for home games. It's not just the Blackwell, right? Yeah, we're staying at a hotel the night before games. Oh, the, you guys will stay at a hotel? It just won't be the yeah, Blackwell? Yeah, it just won't be the Blackwell. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my that's my question. Um, and and then as far as I know, you mentioned as far as the the limits on fan attendance um, at games this year, a lot of it being dictated by various state regulations. What would what if if there were no state regulations or some of those were eased? Do you have any sense on what you would be comfortable as far as fan wise? Yeah, Brett, help me. When we were working with Dr. Roberts, we we're in that twenty one, twenty two range. Is that right? Yeah, about, about 22,000 and change. That was cool. a, like a 17 to 18% capacity based on being able to space the pod six feet apart. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brett. Uh, next up, we have time for just a couple more questions. If there's someone out there that absolutely has a question, uh, please text me or wave at us or something. Uh, uh, up next is Kyle Rowland with the Toledo Toledo. Kyle? Hey, Gene, expanding on Tim's travel question, um, are you guys going to be flying to every game or will there be any that you bus to? Yeah, we'll, uh, right now we're flying to every game. Uh, Michigan State's kind of up for grabs, uh, but we haven't finalized that one. But others we're flying to will be sending. Um, uh, normally we send over a van or depending upon where we're going, we'll, we'll send over a bus. But now we'll be sending over two buses because there'll be less people on the planes because we'll be flying with – a middle seat open, so there'll be less people on the planes. And we got a bigger plane uh, for those flights. So uh, right now, the Michigan State one's up for grabs. We, we, we're still debating that one. Is Michigan State, is that a cost savings or a safety reason? Uh, that would be more kind of both, both, Kyle, uh, as we talk about it. Um, I think we'll probably end up flying back for sure, because after you play a game, the worst thing to do is uh, – put their Mufford on a bus. But um, so we, we, we're just not sure on that one yet. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something we have to think about. Uh, game time matters. 
And so, unfortunately, we won't we won't know the game time in, in time. So we'll just have to make a make a decision earlier. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And next up, Adam Jardy with the Columbus Dispatch. Adam. Hi, Gene. Um, all these, all the talk today, obviously, with, with football and what's coming up this weekend, but I wonder what sort of ramifications some of these decisions have for, for, for basketball season, and, and if you have any sense on where the Big Ten is on finalizing its details for the season. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're making great progress, Adam. Uh, you know, obviously, the testing protocols uh, for basketball, uh, both basketball programs and men's ice hockey, frankly, have been uh, defined. And uh, so we'll be testing just like we're doing for football every day or six days a week. And then um, uh, we're, uh, we don't have the report yet, but we're pretty much finalizing uh, the testing around our non-conference opponents. As you know, the NCAA requires your non-conference, requires everyone at a minimum to do three, piece, three tests a week. And uh, so we will, uh, work with our non-conference opponents to, to make sure they're doing that and we'll probably end up testing them uh, here as well. So uh, we're still finalizing all that, but uh, we're moving. As you know, men's basketball is in an MTE and um, um, Jim, Dr. Borchers has worked with that MTE and they'll be tested every day in that MTE. So we're comfortable with that. Uh, then we'll end up with a couple of non the non-conference games that we'll have to uh, work the protocols around. So I, I feel good about it. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we're getting close. And when will the basketball players begin daily testing? Uh, they've already started. Okay. okay. Thank you. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone and uh, let everyone know it's, it appears it's really, really obvious that Ohio State football is back and they're back this week because after about 500 Zoom calls this since March, this was the most stress-free call I've had, and I feel really good. And I just want to thank everyone for being on. Hey, hey, Jerry, Tim is raising his hand again. Tim is raising his. Well, I, got one, I got, I got, I got one. I got one other quickie, Gene. It's either okay. for you or Erica, but uh, what what are the responsibilities you guys have as hosts for the visiting teams in terms of? You know, obviously the locker rooms and stuff, but are are y'all involved in helping them find uh, overnight, uh, you know, hotel accommodations? What what are just sort of the responsibilities y'all have in that regard? Erica? Sure. Yeah, honestly, not a whole lot has changed working with them. Um, they're pretty good about finding their accommodations um, in town. I work with the hotel directly just to make sure everything's good. But, you know, I talked to the hotel that Nebraska's staying at. I said, you know what? what you're used to, it's completely changed. Um, and so I'll lean on the team and what their needs are. And if something seems a little bit above and beyond what they're used to accommodating, just to let me know. Um, at the stadium, same goes. I think we're just there, we're there to help them and make sure that we are providing them the things that they need to be successful. Um, we are expanding the space that they have available. So instead of just the locker room, they have the locker room and the space above them to be able to spread out further. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm here to help them out and make sure that they have all the tools and resources available to make sure that they're having a successful day too um, off the field.